This is the World AIDS Museum and Educational Center. It's the only museum in the world that is documenting and remembering the history of the HIV AIDS epidemic. We also educate and enlighten the community on the subject, as well as empowering the survivors. So the World AIDS Museum and Educational Center has been open a little over two years. It's the only museum in the world that's documenting and remembering the history of the HIV AIDS epidemic, and it's also empowering the survivors, educating and enlightening the community. Our main exhibit is the history of HIV and AIDS. We show how it starts off as a monkey virus in the Congo, and then also through the 80s and the 90s. Here on our main panel, you'll see the black panel is the main story of HIV and, uh, month by month, year by year. In the gray area, these are the highlights of the HIV AIDS stories. The panel you're looking at now is the beginning of the 80s where it really all began and started. Now on our panels too, in the middle here is this red line, and that's just a current event timeline showing you what's happening in the world to the HIV story. So when you do come in here, you'll come in and you'll follow our panels, our exhibit, the 1980s, the 1990s, AIDS denialism in South Africa, and then you go around, and then you see now to 2012 and 2014, to today, 2016, and all the important improvements such as Truvada and Pep and Prep, all the new medications, and all the different programs that are happening to bring HIV and AIDS to the world to let people know that it's not a death sentence anymore, that it's livable, and you can live with HIV, and to educate people the proper way with the current facts. So here is one of our premier exhibits called the Stigma Wall. And here we have many items of stigma. As we say here in the museum, sometimes stigma is deadlier than the disease itself. Because if you can wipe away the stigma, people can understand the subject of HIV and AIDS much better. We have many different items, such as these t-shirts from the ACT UP experience. Uh, it's sad because the quilt was very popular in the 80s and 90s. It still is around, but people don't die of AIDS like they used to in the old days. So today, the quilt is still active, and you still can make quilts and donate them to the cause. The main uh, Names Project quilt is in a warehouse in Atlanta. And in 1996 was the last time that the quilt could be publicly displayed. Um, it's all, right, like I said, right now folded up on shelves in a warehouse in Atlanta. It weighs over 55 tons, has over 55,000 panels. And if you can't go to Atlanta and see the quilt, but here at our museum we have the touch screen computer. So people can come in here and see these wonderful quilts. A panel is three feet by six feet, the standard size of a coffin or a casket. And so if you made a quilt or you know somebody on the Names Project quilt, you can come in here and type their name in here and see these quilts, at least on a touch screen computer, since we can't go to Atlanta and see them. So here on this wall here, um, we show many different magazines. From the very beginning of the HIV AIDS epidemic, um, AIDS has been in the media from the very beginning till right now. And it's covered so many different levels and aspects of our life, such as the People Magazine story about the uh, Kimberly Bergalis and the dentist, that story, uh, AIDS and the Single Woman, Children with AIDS, Orphan with AIDS, uh, AIDS in the Media, um, The Faces of AIDS, Teens and AIDS, AIDS in the Arts. This is the very first copy of Paz Magazine, and Paz Magazine was very instrumental in just getting the HIV com community put together and getting the knowledge out there. So on this particular wall, it's very uh, enlightening on how it's been in the media ever since, and we have to keep it in the media because we have to open up the conversation and keep this conversation going to let people know that AIDS is still here and it's preventable and it's also treatable. So here in our museum, the artwork is a really important component of how we educate and enlighten the community. And this is a good example because this particular piece of artwork uh, is our first piece of artwork we got in the museum. It's called the 10-Year Ribbon. The artist saves all of his HIV medicine bottles for 10 full years. Uh, it comes out to 417 bottles of medication. Uh, the artist, as you can see, is me. I made this, and it's how I came to the project. But what's really exciting about it is 417 bottles of medication, and one bottle cost about approximately $800 for 30 days supply. This sculpture represents $333,000 worth of medication in 10 years. When young kids come to us and say, oh, if I get HIV, I'll just take a pill. Well, no, you don't, kid. You have to take all these pills the rest of your life. At the World AIDS Museum and Educational Center, we're educating the community. 
We're actually in the school system teaching HIV and uh, STI education in the schools. But also what's important is people come here, whether they be students or seniors, everyone is welcome to come in here and experience the educational process here in our museum. Our main gallery exhibit of the history of HIV and AIDS, plus our two art galleries, and using the artwork to really tell the story and educate people on the subject matter. Uh, so whether it be black or white, male or female, young or old, everyone's welcome to come here to learn about HIV and AIDS because there's many people out there doing testing and doing case management, but what we do here is open up the conversation and make people comfortable talking about this because if we don't talk about it, we're not going to be able to break down the stigma and cure this disease.